Hi, this is Tim Clark with End Times Matrix News coming at you for our special 4th of July show. Today's show is going to be called Decoding the I Overlando Matrix 888. And I have with me today Chris. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing good. Hello, everybody. And this is a special show because this is a crowd participation show we are going to piece together all the puzzle pieces to this orlando matrix and we want to say a special thank you to everybody who has fought and died for the united states to give us freedom we want to thank all the families out there that are patriotic the families out there that love Jesus, love Christ, love what this nation used to represent. We're going to persevere until the end. So we really appreciate everybody out there. We know that the other side, the Lucifer side, has no interest in independence, just lies, deception, and tyranny. This is a really interesting show, Chris, that we came together with days ago and tried to record initially at that time. We had trouble and we we're having to re re record at this time, but it's actually working out really well because just as a lot of confirmation to what we recorded then to what we're recording today. A lot of added stuff. I think it's it's very important to come at things with a Christian perspective from a Holy Spirit driven perspective on things. The heart driven Holy Spirit speaking out and anointing and speaking truth. And this was driven home today to me about this whole thing between the kingdom of lies and the kingdom of truth and that we live in this age of deception and that by being anchored biblically you're anchored to the spirit of truth which is Jesus Christ. So this show is going to be called Decoding the Eye of Orlando. And we know that there's a lot of rituals that have just recently occurred in Orlando. We're going to call it rituals because it is rituals when you look at it after we present the information. I think, Chris, why don't we start off where we got involved with Orlando in the first place? And uh, I don't know if people remember, we originally really got involved with the Soul Invictus games way before other people caught on to it because we went and we actually put up the Fox and Friends depiction of the Sol Invictus event on their show. They rode up in the Jaguar Beast. And the woman who was riding the beast got out and they walked in with their little capstone flag that was black <laughs> representing the black sun. We had to sit there and watch this ritual being performed as it came down this hallway or a portal. So the black sun was coming, the capstone was coming through the portal. Sol Invictus, the term is the unconquered sun. And this was the god of Mithraism, the god of the Roman legions of the pagan world, Sol Invictus. That's where we started off with this, and that was the first connection to Orlando. Prince Harry came over, and Prince Harry connected with the Black Sun, Nazism, and all that, and their family came from a German background, even though they're the House of Windsor, but their background is German. And they came over here, and we had the Bushes and all them involved in the Wounded Warriors game, where basically, if you look at it from the Masonic point of view of reconstructing Osiris, the Wounded Warriors game was about warriors who had lost parts of themselves. And through prosthetics and stuff, they're able to compete again. In a way, it symbolizes the putting the pieces of Osiris back together. After ISIS has been marching across the Middle East, destroying Christianity, here you have the putting together the pieces of Osiris ritualistically at the Sol Invictus game. Then we got into some other events. What was the next event, Chris, that occurred in Orlando? It was the shooting of Christina Grimmie. What did we see there ritualistically or symbolically with this story? Well, the biggest thing is the symbol and the band that she played with called Before You Exit. And their tour was called All the Lights. And we know Lucifer is the god of false light and false peace. Can you explain that symbol that's in the background where the exit sign is and that symbol as she's walking around the stage? Yeah, the symbol is actually a satanic cross. The band may not be aware of that because their managers and the people above them are the ones that tell them what to wear. They make the symbolism and they, they, they're the ones who market all of those things. But it is a satanic cross. It actually is a cross of Lucifer because the symbol is sulfur. The Latin word for Lucifer is phosphorus, and phosphorus is sulfur, and that symbol is sulfur, and it has the Ouroboros going around, and the triangle is the capstone that we talked about before 
with the coding of the 235 and the May 23rd, the word America coming on the Budweiser can. And then it's interesting because the shooter who shot Christina Grimmie was wearing red, white, and blue. And she is actually wearing a black dress with a upside down triangle right in front of her private area, which represents lunar female. And, and we know that New York represents the female aspect. And then California represents the male aspect. So you have the triangle on each corner that comes together. So if you have the Eye of Orlando representing the capstone and the top of the capstone going down to Missouri, and then you have the other part of the capstone going down to California, which one of our viewers pointed out that California is representative of the Phoenix. The other side of the capstone represents New York. So we have been able to piece this puzzle together a little bit further to show that the Belt of Orion represents California, Missouri, New York. And then you have the capstone, the Eye of Horus, right there in Florida. And it's real interesting because I had a friend of mine email me and ask me about a prisoner of the sun and the movie because it shoots out from the pyramids, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, and it mentions the return of Osiris. Mm -hmm. And then so I looked that up and that movie, Prisoner of the Sun, comes from the adventures of Tintin. And Tintin looks exactly like the killer who killed Christina Grimm. Right. Right. The Tintin character, absolutely, side by side, it looks exactly alike. And so that was from Prisoners of the Sun, which are people who are slaves to the devil. And that really just made me think of the whole Lone Gunman and MK Ultra thing and how these people are activated to play out part of rituals, whether it be John Lennon getting shot and then the person going reading Catcher in the Rye right in front of him, where he shot him or you know, strange things like that. These lone gunmen events are always seems to be these kind of uh, intelligence agency connected pre-programmed individuals. And I thought that was very interesting because, you know, when you first told me the storyline of uh, Christina Grimmie, you told me the story was here she is and you hear, uh, this is what I hear superficially is that she's extending her arms out into a crucifix and that this fan who's in love with her comes up and shoots her three times. And then I go, well, that's very symbolic of the cross. That's Christ had three spikes driven through him and crucified him. And then I say, well, there's a lot more to this story. And other people have picked up on that, too. These rituals, this ritual with Christina, the ritual of Soul Invictus, and the ritual with the pulse the Pulse nightclub shooting. These are rituals, and these three are connected to Orlando, like the three points that we were talking about with Orion's Belt. We were talking about with New York City and the Goddess. We were talking about the Arch in St. Louis. We were talking about San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge. The three points of what we're saying is the Belt of Orion going across the country as they're progressing from the old order to the new order, to the phoenix taking off. And then it connects all back here at this point that we're calling the capstone or the Eye of Horus of Orlando because we have the Eye of Orlando. And the three events now rituals associated with Orlando, Sol Invictus, uh, Christina being killed, and the Pulse nightclub. And I thought it's interesting because 2016 is the year of pulses. Pulses being legumes, things like that. That's the surface story for it. But if you get into the depth of a, understanding what a pulse is, a pulse can be a frequency or a wave or a scalar wave. It also gets into an area of physics called pulse physics. And there's dark pulse physics, which I found very interesting since CERN's so obsessed with dark matter and the dark universe. When you read one of the definitions of pulse, pulse means a pushing, putting pressure and pushing. When you look at the Illuminati and their, their use of pushing the herd of humanity into a direction, the pulse nightclub was a pushing or a forcing us into this gun control debate whether you believe this event's real or not and that's yeah true news has been putting out a lot of good videos putting pressure on the whole government structure to explain the 911 calls to point out the lies the inconsistencies the gag orders being put on the sheriff's departments throughout florida 
about this Pulse nightclub shooting. So when Chris and I looked at the Christina aspect of this, we went, okay, so we have a ritual. We have her representing Christ. We have Christ in her name. We got three spikes being driven through her in the sense of bullets or metal being driven through her and crucified, extinguishing her voice, the show that she came from. And then we got the symbol of her standing on the stage of the dragon being killed by a character that's a very interesting spitting image of this character, Tintin, who's a prisoner of the sun. And there's connections there also to the Tin Man and Oz with not having a heart. See, she, he's supposed to be in love with her, but he kills her. With It's like heartless. The point of this is we're watching a ritual. We know we're watching a ritual. Regardless of the actors involved, whether they know they're involved or not, who, who dies and who doesn't die, we don't have any clear information on the reality of the deaths of the Pulse nightclub shootings. We don't really know much of anything regarding the reality of these events, but we can see the symbolism of the events being played out here. What we found interesting about this is that what does these rituals spell out? What's the message being communicated here? And we came up with basically, I think, a rough interpretation of what's going on here. I saw what was an advantage for us in reshooting this, that Neptune Diaries just came out with something on Christina before we went on the air right now. And I thought he did a great job of being very respectful to her, being a nice Christian young lady that uh, earned her crown. And it was a very nice, respectful piece. But he came up with defining the, like we were defining the players in the ritual. This is what he came up with Christina Victoria Grimmy, he said that she was the uncompromising, victorious, and conquering follower of Christ. And she was killed by Kevin James Lobel, the heel-catching supplanter of the brave lion who has been beautiful and truthful since the beginning. He's saying that the Kevin character is playing Lucifer and he's killing the Christ character. And the Christ character has this term, uncompromising, victorious. Saul Invictus is the unconquered son. What I came up with as far as what I felt led to say is that this ritual that happened with Orlando, the ritual in the way I see it is that the message being communicated is that the unconquered son, and Orlando does mean fame throughout the land. The unconquered son's fame will spread throughout the land as the voice or the Christian voice is extinguished or silenced. And that is the message that I came up with that I believe is also correct in looking at this, the the Orlando Matrix rituals. There's plenty more in here. I mean, we got into looking at Orlando and how this was established and why do we have these things going on there. We have the connections to Wild Bill Donovan and the CIA establishing Walt Disney World and setting up Disney in Orlando as an intelligence operation for doing the mind control testing, MK Ultras and all this other mind control stuff. So this Orlando area is an intelligence area of the intelligence agencies. We had Wild Bill Donovan connected to the OSS. Coming out of World War II, we have the OSS being established in Rockefeller Plaza with Wild Bill Donovan with the Rockefellers. Even their address, 3609 Rockefeller Central or whatever it is. Of course, it's all cult numbers. Then we have the connections between my favorite connections through the Operation Paperclip. We got Walt Disney sitting there shaking hands with Werner von Braun, the Nazi rocket scientist who headed up NASA, which was also in Florida. So we definitely have a, an intelligence operation running this whole center of Florida this Orlando area, establishing this Orlando area for Disney and running their MK Ultra mind control stuff through this Disney complex. So it's kind of like having the candy store on top of the uh, House of Horrors. 
if you want to put it that way. And as you can tell, they use the media. The uh, Disney is like the one of the biggest, if not the biggest, media conglomerate out there. And it was uh, firmly backed by CIA. So it just shows you that we got a lot of stuff going on here with Orlando. Now, we think it's the eye of Horus in the sense of a completion of the capstone over the United States. And I think that coincides with what we found with Casey from Enter the Stars a couple of years back when we actually went over the American pentagram. So we have the belt of Orion going across, capstone completed with Orlando over the American pentagram. What other things that we have associated with Christina? She's 22 years old, and we know that the Cassini is doing a ritual running into one of the moons that was a titan that fought against the Olympians in mythology. So I think that this ritual is extremely significant to what is going on as far as the end times, the return of the giants, like the Bible says, in the days of Noah and the Olympians. Yeah, I think this is very interesting that when you hooked up the 22 with the Cassini Pro, because we, we tracked this whole Cassini operation. As they went out, we went through every everywhere they were orbiting. We did a show on it with Anthony. We went back to check our figures here. What's going on with this Cassini thing? Because we got the 22, as they say in their article on Cassini, when the mission is supposed to end, it says there's going to be 22 daring orbits between Saturn and and its innermost D ring from April 2017. And I said, okay, so when when are they crashing this thing? When are they actually crashing it? And he says, when it's all said and done, on uh, September 15th, 2017, Cassini will plunge through Saturn's atmosphere, its clouds and fog, collecting and sending data right up until its final minutes. The point is, that there is a ritual here. Now, when you study the Cassini probe and the crashing of Cassini, and you actually do all the data, you crunch all the numbers on the page given, it's just eight eights, eight eight eights all over the place. It's just tons of ritual numbers on the Cassini probe crashing. You'll just get eight eight eights everywhere. So September fifteenth, they gave us that. What else do we know that's going on in September that we are looking for in two thousand seventeen? What do we have there, Chris? We have the birth of Jupiter. Mm. Saturn and Jupiter are connected, aren't they? Yep. And the moon that the Cassini is going to crash into was the opponent of Jupiter, and that the would Olympian. Be, that would be Enceladus, right? Mm -hmm. The moon of Enceladus. Very interesting. So we found out that the woman of Revelation 12... The alignment that we're looking for is September 23rd. And if you all remember, there was a big, big, everybody was talking September 23rd of last year. Everybody was looking at that date. Now, September 23rd actually lies eight days after the Cassini crash. Okay, there's your eight. And the Feast of Trumpets begins on September 21st, 2017. What do we have working here <laughs> as far as you think, Chris? Um, I think this is a ritual, of course, of opening the gate because we've explained the 888 across America and the phoenix, the symbolism of California. The phoenix is associated with Thoth and Mercury, the messenger. We were talking about uh, the symbolism of the Order of the Dragon, which is uh, the sulfuric symbol and the Ouroboros going around with a capstone on the stage of before you ex exit. Well, sulfur is related uh, with fire, masculinity, the soul, but it's also related to Satanism, the devil, and the fire of hell. And salt is related with the physical body, crystallization, and chemical reactions. So this is a ritual with the, the sigil that Tim was talking about before with Christina wearing the upside down triangle and the other triangle being on stage. And I'm sure that they're doing some type of satanic uh, rituals behind the scene for all of this to happen to sacrifice her to their sun god with her representing the moon the female aspect 
and the raising of Sol Invictus. Yeah, and I, I just thought the more we dug, I mean, there's a lot to dig into. You can either go the mind control, the CIA, the intelligence agencies that are running this whole big operation of mind control on the United States and the world populations. Or you can go into the, the Christina's backstory. Who was her manager, Chris? Did we tell them that? No, um, her manager was Selena Gomez's stepfather, and he actually found her on YouTube as a YouTube star. And I think he was looking for someone else to manage uh, during that time. And so he is her manager, which is Selena Gomez's stepfather. He actually raised a lot of money for her family after her death, too. Right. And, you know, Selena Gomez, when she got her fame, she was on the Disney program called Wizards of Waverly Place, where it's a basically a witchcraft family. So here we go with Disney and witchcraft and the occult and all those connections again. We got a young lady who was sacrificed on the stage of the Order of the Dragon as part of a bigger ritual, talking about that the the forces of Antichrist, the fame of the Antichrist will spread throughout the land as the Christian voice is silenced. And that's what I think the message of what we're seeing and the the message of trying to shut up the truth. And that was also the other thing that I wanted to get into with the verse on deception. They will believe a lie. They will deceive and be deceived themselves. The operation that the CIA has been doing since World War II, since Wild Bill Donovan, since the disinformation campaign, since the establishment of the 2012 NDAA domestic propaganda amendments where they can just blatantly lie to the United States citizens and not be held culpable is that lying in and of itself if you do this in a marriage if you're married to somebody who lies all the time the message gets communicated to I don't know who you are and I can't trust anything you say and then that relationship dissolves it's the same method with when you spread lies on a societal level the society breaks down as a whole because nobody can trust what's being communicated or said. Civilization can't operate under the pressure of serial lies. And as we've seen with Barack Obama, his disinformation campaign is to be a serial liar to the public. The attorney general serial lies to the public. Uh, Everybody up there is lying. Why are they all lying? It's a systemic psyop on the american people to destroy the fabric of culture to destroy the fabric of civilization it's also the trademark of lucifer he was a liar and a murderer right that's what they say about satan he's a liar and a murderer from the beginning so the world of the golden age or paganism or lucifer's age is a world of do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law which means it doesn't matter if you lie if it's a means to an end But as some other commentators have said, what comes out of this is a spirit of madness is unleashed on a society. The people who are lying and deceiving forget the truth. They no longer know what the truth is. And there's a spirit of madness which spreads. Therefore, you will bring down the United States off of having the fruit. This is the fruit of the seeds of deception that have been orchestrated since the 40s in this country by this Nazi occult shadow government that we have allowed to just plant the seeds of lies nonstop through the media, through the the CIA buying up capital records and then basically running ABC and taking the radio, taking the movie, taking everything over and just doing disinformation, lying campaigns, destroying the fabric of reality. The chaos that comes out of that will bring in the Antichrist. So we can see, I think, in a big macroscopic scale, that all these rituals and lies are being done to tear down the old order. The beautiful, civilized behavior of a Christian-run country where the population internalized the Ten Commandments in their heart and the Holy Spirit ran their daily lives without the need of standing armies and all this kind of stuff to police a population. And that really is what Tocqueville, when he came over from France and said, what made America great? He said, well, these are moral people. Well, the CIA, Donovan, Casey, Bushes, all these people have been propagating their occult 
agenda to just keep promoting lie after lie after lie. The Clintons, the Obamas, is just one nonstop mess of lies to tear down the fabric of reality. And so I think that's what we're looking at at this time. A viewer of ours, Joan, posted her blog and she did a lot of in-depth research on the number eight and the gods that represent the number eight, which is the moon and the sun. She also did Gematria on Trump. Trump means 88. And Donald J. Trump means 888. What are the chances of that, Tim? Well, we're seeing those numbers come up like crazy from our alignments across America to these events in Orlando, to the events of the Cassini rituals at all 80, 888s and 88s, everything. There's, just, there's eights coming up everywhere, all over the place. And what are the chances that Christina Grimmie's on a stage doing a ritual she doesn't understand as she's going to be a sacrifice she doesn't even know right. on the stage? Right. And what are the chances that the band is called Before You Exit and All the Lights? And how does this tie with Brexit? <laughs> Brexit just exited, and the United States is going to become the North American Union. And you have Canada, which just passed a law of bestiality, the United States and Mexico, which is going to become one. There's going to be a one world currency. And this has everything to do with the old world going out with no more currency and the new world coming in. That's why they want to destroy New York City, which represents the money and the dollar bill. And then you have California representing the Phoenix. The Phoenix is the heart and tongue of Ra. He represents the North. And once the Phoenix flies, in which he is known to the occult as the beginning and the end of the great work, the beginning representing salt. And we talked about that before in alchemy and how they want to do these rituals in order to open the abyss. And the Bible explains all of this in Revelation 9-1. The trumpet and the angels, uh, you know, the angel falling to the earth with the key to the bottomless pit and with wormwood. So Venus is also means Lucifer. It is exactly translated to Lucifer. This is all about Lucifer. These rituals, these uh, symbolism of the hexes and the triangles, and these are powerful satanic witchcraft that they do against these people. God is more, more powerful than all of this with Lucifer and all of this witchcraft. Jesus already conquered it all, and he's our God. So, Amen. And he's coming back soon. Amen. Uh, we want to recognize a couple ministries, don't we, Chris? that we want to just let our audience know that we want to support. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about Pastor D? Yeah, Pastor D is a genuine pastor in Christ filled with the Holy Spirit. He preaches the gospel, the true gospel, and he has been under attack. He's been threatened. Uh, MI6 has come to his house, and he's received death threats, and someone tried to run him off the road. So please pray for him. And I'll put links below if you want to support his ministry because he's building an orphanage in Bulgaria. And he is just on fire for the Lord. J.M. Sinan contacted me from Africa. And he and his wife, Sharon, have a beautiful ministry there. And he is growing the kingdom of God, preaching the gospel, the true gospel from his heart, from Jesus Christ. And so I just pray for him. I pray you pray for him. Pray for Pastor D. And I will put J.M. Sinan's link below because he is doing some teaching uh, in an area with a lot of children, a lot of children. And they have to walk uh, for a very long time in bad weather, rains and everything just to get food and water. So he's trying to build a hall so those children don't have to continue to walk just to hear the message. So I'll provide his links below and his blogs and um, his messages if you want to get to know who he is also. Okay. So, yes, definitely support these great men. The truth is trying to be snuffed out, just like poor Christina. They can't 
squelch the truth of the Lord. I mean, their time's coming and running out. And then it's going to be the righteous reign of Jesus Christ. He's going to reign from then on. And we won't have to put up with these people anymore, this devil anymore. So, uh, yeah, pray for Pastor D and Pastor Sennon. Great ministries they got. Support them. Uh, give them prayer support so that they have angels of protection, especially with intelligence agencies targeting Pastor D. Well, we really thank everybody for listening this week. If you want to give us some input on what you think of what we uh, uncovered today, or if you want to add to it, just make comments on the video. Chris and I are definitely will follow up with future videos based on what you're interested in hearing more about or adding to our videos uh, points that you want to point out that you don't think that we added that helps to round out the story more. We really thank you for uh, being with us for this great 4th of July show. Thanks, Chris, a lot for this show. I'm really happy that we're able.